Our next goal is to show that if f is a convex function, then um, it is locally Lipschitz continuous on the interior of the domain of the function. To accomplish the goal, we, we will need another um, lemma. Let um, EI, where I runs from 1 to N, be the standard autonomous basis of RN. That means um, here uh, E1 is 1, 0, 0, and um, E2 is equal to 0, 1, 0, and so on. En is equal to 0, 0, and 1. Okay. Then we define the set A by the set of all elements of the form um, x bar plus or minus epsilon ei, where i runs from 1 to n. Over here, um, epsilon is a positive number, and uh, x bar is a, a fixed element of Rn. Okay? Then, we have the following conclusions. The first conclusion is um, x bar plus or minus gamma um, ei belongs to the uh, convex hall of A whenever the absolute value of gamma is less than or equal to epsilon. Okay? And uh, the second conclusion is that um, the closed ball with center at x bar and radius um, epsilon over n is a subset of the uh, convex hall of A. Okay? This uh, lemma looks complicated, but I'm going to show it um, that um, it can be easily understood by um, an, uh, a uh, geometric illustration in a two dimension. So in this case, um, n is equal to 2. Okay, and this is x bar. Then in this situation, um, E1 is um, 1, 0, and E2 is 0, 1. Okay, now for epsilon greater than 0, we can see that this point is um, x bar plus epsilon times E1, and this point is um, x bar minus epsilon e1. Here, this is x bar plus epsilon e2. And this is um, x bar minus epsilon e2. Okay? So A consists of four points. A1, A2, A3, and A4. And this is the um, convex hall of A. Okay? Now, um, if you um, take gamma, where the absolute value of gamma is less than or equal to epsilon, then we uh, do similar things and see that um, x bar plus or minus gamma times ei um, are in this convex hall, okay? 
and in this case n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 so um, we can easily see that the uh, ball would center that x bar and radius epsilon over 2 is a subset of the uh, convex hall of A. Okay, and um, this result holds in uh, Rn as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and give the detail proof of this uh, lemma. Let me first prove the first statement. So fix any number gamma such that um, the absolute value of gamma is less than or equal to epsilon. Then uh, minus epsilon is less than or equal to gamma and less than or equal to gamma. Okay? So there exists um, lambda that is in the uh, closed interval 0, 1 such that gamma is a uh, convex combination of minus epsilon and epsilon so gamma is equal to um, lambda times minus epsilon plus one minus lambda times epsilon okay here we can actually um, solve for lambda to find uh, its explicit formula but um, we don't need to do so um, then x bar plus uh, gamma um, ei is equal to x bar plus um, lambda minus epsilon plus 1 minus lambda times epsilon times ei okay? and um, this is equal to x bar plus uh, lambda times minus epsilon times ei plus 1 minus lambda times epsilon times ei okay so then um, x bar here uh, can be written as lambda x bar plus 1 minus lambda times x bar so uh, this is just the same as lambda times x bar minus epsilon ei plus 1 minus lambda times epsilon ei Okay. Note that um, this is an element of A, okay, and this is also um, an element of A. Here, actually, it's um, x bar plus epsilon ei. This is also an element of A. Um, we can see that this is true because lambda x bar and here we have my 1 minus lambda x bar so it's actually x bar okay so here this element is a convex combination of um, two elements of a therefore this belongs to the convex hall of a okay and um, this is also true for minus gamma because uh, uh, minus gamma is also a number in between minus epsilon and epsilon. Okay, so this is also true for um, minus gamma. Actually, here um, the row of minus gamma and gamma are the same. So um, here it's um, sufficient to say that x bar plus gamma. EI belongs to the convex hall of A whenever the absolute value of gamma is less than or equal to epsilon. So uh, we completed the first uh, proof of the um, lemma. Now let me prove the second statement. Uh, to prove the second statement, I'm going to fix an element um, that belongs to the set on the left hand side and show that it belongs to the set on the right hand side using um, the first statement. So fix any x in the uh, closed ball with centered at x bar and radius epsilon over n. Then x k 
can be written as um, x bar plus epsilon over n times u where u belongs to the uh, closed unit more of rn that means um, the norm of u is less than or equal to 1 okay uh, for this element u we uh, have the following representation then uh, u is equal to lambda 1 times e1 plus lambda 2 times e2 plus so on plus um, lambda n times e n okay so that means um, u is just uh, this uh, um, element lambda 1 so on lambda n in rn okay because um, we um, have the following norm of u is less than or equal to 1 um, the square root of um, lambda 1 square plus so on plus lambda n square is less than or equal to 1 okay and this is actually the the norm of u and uh, so the this um, uh, square root is always greater than or equal to the absolute value of lambda i and this is true for all i from 1 to n okay then um, x is equal to x bar plus epsilon over n and uh, we replace u by its representation in terms of um, the elements of the orthonormal basis okay so this is lambda i e i where i turns from 1 to n okay so we can write this as um, the sum where i runs from 1 to n of 1 over n inside of the parenthesis it is um, x bar plus lambda i times epsilon times e i okay we can easily double check this because um, in this sum we have 1 over n and x bar and we add n times so we have exactly x bar for the second one um, we see that this is just the sum of um, lambda i epsilon over n times e i so um, this and this are equal okay and note that if we, um, we we add the coefficients of this representation 1 over n um, n times then we have exactly one okay and each element here belongs to the convex hall of a how come this is true this is true because if we denote gamma i by lambda i times epsilon then the absolute value of gamma i is equal to the absolute value of lambda i times epsilon and this is less than or equal to 1 so this is less than or equal to epsilon okay so based on the first um, conclusion here we see that x bar plus gamma times ei belongs to the convex hall of a okay therefore this is again um, a convex combination of the elements of the convex hall of a and the convex hall of a is a convex set therefore x belongs to the convex hall of a so um, we have showed that whenever x belongs to this ball x belongs to the uh, convex hall of a and therefore this inclusion is satisfied now we are ready to talk about the main theorem of this section let f from rn to the extended real line be a convex function suppose that
the interior of the domain of the function f is non-empty then um, f is locally Lipschitz continuous on this set Okay, that means um, f is locally Lipschitz continuous at any point x bar in the interior of the domain of the function f. Okay, let me go ahead and give the detailed proof of this um, um, theorem. Now we fix any um, x bar that is in the interior of the domain of the function f, okay? And uh, because this is an open set, for um, we, we can pick, pick epsilon greater than zero sufficiently small such that um, x bar plus epsilon times ei belongs to the um, domain of the function f for all i from 1 to n. Again here, ei are vectors in the um, orthonormal basis of i m. Okay, so in this case, because x bar is in the um, interior of the domain of the function f, we can pick uh, epsilon sufficiently small so that um, each element here Here, this is also true for this, okay? So we can um, pick uh, epsilon sufficiently small so that this is true. That means the set A, the set A uh, consisting of four elements here um, is a subset of the domain of the function f. Now in the first step, I'm going to show that f is bounded above on this bar. Step one, I'm going to show that f is bounded above on the ball with centered at x bar and radius um, epsilon over n. Okay. How come this is true? Um, we fix any x in this ball and as we know from um, the uh, previous uh, lemma this ball is a subset of the convex hall of A again A, A was defined from the previous lemma so um, x can be written as a convex combination of elements of A so x can be written as the sum of lambda i, ai, where i runs from 1 to n. Here, actually, um, i runs from 1 to m. Um, m is a natural number. And um, here, lambda i are greater than or equal to 0. The sum of lambda i, where i runs from 1 to m is equal to 1 and each ai belongs to the set a and note that a is a finite set since a is a finite set we can define
um, the number m by the max of the function values of f on a okay and 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 obviously this is a, a real number okay then from this representation we have that f of x is equal to f of the sum of lambda i ai where i runs from 1 to m and uh, by the complexity of f this is less than or equal to the sum of lambda i times f of ai where i runs from 1 to m okay and each of the number here is less than or equal to m so this is less than or equal to the sum of um, lambda i times m where um, i runs from 1 to m and because this sum is equal to 1 so this is also equal to m okay so from here we see that uh, whenever x is in this ball f of x is less than or equal to m therefore f is bounded above on um, this ball by m okay now we are ready to uh, move to the second step where we can make this conclusion by step one f is bounded above on the ball with center at x bar and radius epsilon over n so f is um, Lipschitz continuous on um, the ball with center at x bar and radius epsilon over 2n so this is an important result we proved earlier and um, this condition um, this conclusion implies that um, f is locally Lipschitz continuous around x bar therefore f is locally Lipschitz continuous around x bar okay so we have completed the proof that um, if we take any x bar in the interior of the domain of the function f then f is locally Lipschitz continuous around the x bar therefore um, we have this conclusion that f is locally Lipschitz continuous on the interior of the domain of the function f now I'm going to introduce two important results that are consequences of the um, theorem presented earlier. If f from Rn to the real line is a convex function, then um, f is locally Lipschitz continuous on Rn okay so in this situation f is a real valued function not an extended real value function so um, the domain of the function f is equal to rn okay and therefore the interior of the um, domain of the function f is also rn the previous theorem says that then f is locally Lipschitz continuous on the domain of the function f which is rn so this conclusion is obvious but it gives a very very nice um, analysis probably for um, convex functions defined on RN. For example, if um, we look at the functions such as um, the squaring functions f of x equals x squared, this is a convex function, a real valued convex function, therefore it is locally Lipschitz uh, on R. Okay? 
uh, another example is um, um, f of x equals the um, x f of x equals e to the x. This function is also convex, therefore it is um, locally ellipsis on the uh, domain of the function, which is the whole real line. Without the convexity, um, of course, this result um, is no longer true. We can look at another function. Uh, for example, this function is f of x is equal to 0 if x is less than or equal to 0 and it's equal to um, the square root of x if x is positive. This function is defined on the whole real line, is uh, non-convex and is not locally ellipsic continuous around 0. This is another important corollary. Let f from Rn to the extended real line be a convex function. And let x bar be a point in the uh, domain of the function f. Okay. The following properties. are equivalent. The first property is f is continuous at x bar. Okay. The second property is f is um, x bar is in the interior of the uh, domain of the function f. Okay, and uh, the third property is f is a local ellipsis continuous around x bar. Okay. So the proof of this uh, corollary is very, very obvious based on what we have done. So let me go ahead and give um, um, the detailed proof. Now, if we assume that f is continuous at x bar, that means if we assume i, then um, by a remark presented earlier, uh, we see that x bar belongs to the interior of the domain of the function f. Okay. Now. Um, if we assume the second property, that means x bar is in the um, interior of the domain of the function f, then um, f is locally ellipsis continuous around x bar because we know that f is a convex function, so it is locally ellipsis on the interior of the domain of the function. In particular, it is continuous around. Now, it is locally ellipsis continuous around x bar. Okay. And uh, finally, if we assume that f is locally ellipsis continuous around x bar by the definition um, and by a uh, remark presented earlier, f is uh, continuous at x bar. So, um, so again, uh, the result presented here is obvious from, um, from what we have done.